Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildred, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Welcome to the second installment of The Monk Ways In, wherein I examine events currently going on in gaming and give my two cents on the matter. It would seem that the adage of everything old is new again has borne fruit when it comes to game journalism. In this case, it's Venture Beat, who happens to be on the chopping block where Polygon's head was one year ago. Recently at Gamescom, a curious little title called Cuphead was demoed. A mix of Contra and 1950s style animation done quite faithfully. Dean Takahashi, a gaming and tech journalist of nearly 20 years, was at this event. What happened since has become the stuff of legendary infamy, with a complete disunderstanding of how the game plays and everyone raking him over the coals for his gameplay. His response was the shifting of the goalpost, first as an initial comment, and then later in a follow-up article when his gameplay was shared by journalist Ian Miles Chong. Everything else followed the pattern that's been seen since the Dragon's Crown incident. A journalist does something stupid, gamers call him out, other journalists try to shame the people criticizing the journalist. In this case, buzzword criticisms like skill shaming, skill fetishization, and the failure of tutorials came out like a flood, most of them trying some form of emotional blackmail based on shaming wrong think politics or simple name calling. And then they wonder why people have such little respect for games journalism. In a form of deja vu from one year ago, the argument du jour was that games journalists don't need to be good at games. Personally, this is something that I can see to a small extent, but it's a matter of, I understand the letter of the question, but dispute the spirit of it. The problem for me is that this question is presented in a black and white manner, as if gamers are demanding that game journalists possess the level of skill that's seen in the pro gaming circuit. To my knowledge, this is a belief that's carved out of whole cloth. The consensus I have seen, however, is that someone getting paid large sums of money to be flown to these trade shows all over the world would have basic understanding of how games presently operate. When you're in that position of authority, there's the expectation that you will put in the work that justifies that position. Browbeating the people who don't have that position does not look good on your credibility. It would be easy to say that this was an isolated incident. Flying cost country can certainly be exhausting after all. However, when one looks at the work of Dean Takahashi, a pattern begins to emerge that is far less charitable to him. Let's go through a few standouts. In 2008, he published a negative review of Mass Effect, calling it too hard and having haphazard gameplay. However, it was pointed out that he was playing through the game, ignoring the talent points you gained from leveling up. While he issued an apology, he made at least one passive-aggressive remark to blame the developers for putting him in this position. A few years later, he caught flack for kicking the hornet's nest by claiming that Warhammer 40,000's Space Marine was a Gears of War ripoff, bemoaning, in his words, the death of originality. Warhammer fans are particularly passionate, myself included, as one might be with that kind of investment, and thus he got raked over the coals for it. His response was to protest that it wasn't meant to be a review, saying, quote, I walked into a room, looked at a game, and offered what I thought about it. Last year, this bemoaning would take on a different form in regard to XCOM 2, targeting gamers' obsession with difficulty and raising the stakes, both his words, in a statement I find ironic given how games journalists keep comparing any difficult game to Dark Souls. This was stated in spite of the fact that there are options in the game to reduce the difficulty if so desired. And now, not only his failures at Cuphead, but also erroneously claiming that it was developed by the same people behind Super Meat Boy. I will not attempt to psychoanalyze Mr. Takahashi's feelings on gameplay, but the pattern would indicate a person who sees video games and video game communities as something beneath him. Maybe that's not his feelings in reality, but actions certainly speak louder than words. To that end, I have no sympathy for any mean remarks he may have gotten over his Cuphead gameplay. All of this could have been avoided if he had come out and taken his humble pies with something to the extent of I'm not good at platformers or a similar sentiment, but instead he moved the goalpost, invoked logical fallacies, and when all else failed, attempted to play the victim. He had the opportunity to act like an adult. Instead he chose to be what he's now become, a poster child for everything wrong with gaming journalism. I have a particular litmus test whenever something like this comes up. I have to ask myself, would I tolerate this argument in any other medium? Would I tolerate someone whose job it is to convey information looking down at me for being an enthusiast? Obviously, I would not. So why should I give you a free pass, Mr. Takahashi?